It's black powder hunting season time again, folks. Flintlocks, percussion. 98% of you will be hunting with percussion. So we'll talk about percussion and its particular quirks to keeping it alive in the weather outside in the real world. An English gentleman was once asked why he continued to hunt with the flintlock system because they, weren't unre they were unreliable in rainy weather. His answer was that gentlemen don't hunt in such weather. However, we don't have that choice. So let's take a look at what's really going on here. In a modern shell, we'll take this, this uh, 57 Snyder round. We have a primer in the bottom of it. That little silver thing right there is a primer. There's gunpowder inside this cartridge and then there's a projectile on the top. What we're going to do is recreate that cartridge inside of something that the entire cartridge looks like a firearm. Gunpowder is gonna go down the muzzle. We're gonna put a projectile in here and I'll draw that in a moment. But here's the part about percussion guns, why I'm doing this entire thing here. The gunpowder inside of this breech block has to make two 90 degree turns. So if you get any fouling, contamination, what have you, up inside this system, it becomes very, very difficult to clear it out in the field. And once you've fired your first round, I'm here to tell you, a flintlock is easier to keep running. Real men shoot flint. How do we prevent ourselves from getting in trouble? Ah, before you start, this gun's been in a closet for nine months, maybe 12 months. There's oil back here. You gotta make sure this thing is absolutely scrupulously dry. Run several patches down it, make sure there's no oil. Then the next thing we'll be doing is putting a cap on this nipple here, once we verify it, obviously, that we can get all the way to the bottom and that it's empty, and we're gonna pop a couple of caps until when you pop the cap, and we'll show you this in a little bit, the grass out in front of the muzzle when you pop this should move. Okay, so I verified this thing clear by sticking a ramrod down it, because it's very, very embarrassing. See, I know that empty happens to be on my ramrod right about there, and there it is, it's empty, right? It's very embarrassing to uh, clear the breech of a gun with a live percussion cap um, and have the gun go off. It's very embarrassing to forget to remove the ramrod from the barrel, two things you probably shouldn't do. All right, one of the things we detest here in South Carolina is fire ants. So I'm gonna show you how to check a gun clear, how to make sure that the flash channel's clear and everything's clear. We're gonna put a cap on the nipple and we're gonna shoot it very close to the ground and either watch the grass move or watch the fire ants scatter. You don't wanna stick the muzzle into dirt. You don't want it too far away. But if the fire ants scatter, that means that the flash channel is clear. You can see the dirt's moving, so we know that the percussion from the cap is going through the flash channel and down the barrel. After that's done, and you know the gun's dry and clean, go ahead and load and let it rip, and hopefully you'll hit something a little bit bigger than an eight-point fire amp. Once you've done that, set the nipple back down on here. Now, there's a variety of things that people are talking about. What I'm trying to do is keep any moisture in the atmosphere out of here until we load the gun. Then it's gunpowder and a projectile. In the breech, inside the breech, here we have the barrel. We've got the rifling in it. There's a plug in the back end of this thing. And then right in front of that plug, we're going to have a drum of some sort. And it's threaded into the side walls of the barrel here. And then here's the insides, right? So the powder has to come up inside this drum and then that's where we're gonna place our nipple. And right here is where you run into problems with water. And also, if you don't clean the gun out with soap and water, you'll get this big buildup of crud right down here. And this will be solid crud and it blocks off your passage from here to here. And nothing you do is going to get that out unless you scrape it out, drill it out, a lot of times you have to pull the breech plug out. You have to pull the whole rear end of this thing out in order to get at it. So water, maybe with a little bit of Murphy's oil soap in it. That's what you use to clean with. Um, I've heard of mixtures that contain hydrogen peroxide and just between you, me and a wall, I'd stay away from those only because it um, 
makes the metal rust like crazy. But you're picking up a weapon you've never used before and you're going out on a guest hunt. One of my friends is getting ready to do that. And we're shooting this video specifically to tell him when he gets handed this weapon, what he has to look for. Now, does it matter if there's a hole in the back end of this thing that takes a 209 primer, a shotgun primer? No, because you must keep the water out. You have to keep the water and the fouling out. What's even worse about these 209 guns is that there's usually a set of threads here and the black powder will absorb water out of the uh, atmosphere and the, sul the sulfuric acid that gets created from the sulfur and the gunpowder in the water just attacks everything that's got threads and fuses these things into a solid mass. So typically, if you've ever heard me say half of all muzzle loaders are actually loaded, it's because you will have this gun come in with this pile of GAC right here, a bunch of gunpowder right here, and a ball right there. While we snapped about 50 or 60 caps, let me show you. Oh, dear God, don't do that. Because what will happen is, is that will be the one time you figured out how to make it go off, and then you qualify for the Darwin Awards. How I get out of that immaterial to most people is, is that I actually have a bunch of Zerk fittings that I put on here, and I'll actually pump grease in this and break this whole thing loose and start it up the barrel. Once I get it there, we can get a screw screwed into this ball and pull it out. Anyway, that's black powder in a nutshell. Keep your powder dry and keep this breech area scrupulously clean. And that's really what you got to do. And the rest of it is just side picture, squeeze, breathe, reload, eat a Snickers bar, and track.